Google ad search campaigns. You don't know how to set this up or you did it a while ago, but because of the recent changes, you just forgot how to do it and you don't want to really mess it up. I will show you how to set up a simple Google ad search campaign, how to add the right keywords, the right, right target audience, and also I will show you a few pitfalls that you can face with. Let's jump into it and I will go to my computer. So the very first step is really just knowing what you want, right? So here's just a theoretical example. Uh, we want to run, run the search campaigns for an eco-friendly, innovative household uh, cleaning product. The product stands out in the market for its use of all natural ingredients, its effectiveness in cleaning and its commitment to sustainability. Target audience is also added here and we want to craft a compelling ad copy uh, for a Google ad search campaign. So the very first step is that we go to um, different spying tools and actually we look for the top three, five competitors and see what keywords they use and and we want to check how much they spend and just really get some information. So if I go to, let's say, uh, persil.com, which let's say a potential competitor, then uh, you will see different data like, or, or tide.com, clorox.com, you know, all these major brands and what keywords they use, watch the search volume for these different keywords. So you can really just get a picture about your market and your competitors. The other thing is, so simply you just want to go to uh, Google, uh, the Google Keyword Planner and uh, you want to map out the main keywords that, uh, that you can use for this ad. Let's say we already did it and we have the main keywords, we have the general keywords and we have long, longer tail keywords as well. So we know what we want to add. Also, I highly recommend to organize this into a spreadsheet and uh, you should also check how uh, much uh, one click actually costs on the market so you can actually plan regarding your budget as well. Once we have this information, then uh, you can actually go to uh, your uh, Google ad account and you can go create and we want to create a completely new campaign from scratch. So yeah. There are, these are the potential campaign types. There is sales and then leads, website traffic. And I would say these are the most common ones. Uh, obviously, if you're a software company, app can be important. You can also build on awareness, but this is more about branding, local store visits. Actually, that's trackable and you can use that as well. But um, if you are a service business, then most likely leads is the most important for you. Website traffic is also about branding. And if you are in e-commerce, most likely sales will be the one that you want to use. And after you can see the campaign types here. So we will pick search. Let's go for a search campaign. Select the ways you would like to reach your goal. So yeah, primarily we want to have a store uh, or actually website visits, online um, visits. So now I will just use the, the Shopify link of our test store. I will just uh, put this here. Choose your sales conversion goal. So yeah, it's a purchase. We want to use a campaign name and a nomenclature in general that uh, completely makes sense. So. You know, when you scale, it's one of the biggest nightmares that actually you get lost in your own ads. So you want to keep it clean and uh, easy to understand. Um, there are, as you probably know, there are three levels of your ads. There is a campaign level and then an ad set level and there are the particular ads. And you want to make sure that on each level you don't get uh, lost between the layers or the different uh, groups of your ads. So now what I will do is, uh, yeah, let's say eco-friendly household cleaning product and uh, we will target the USA and the search campaign. So yeah, I have all information that I really need here. Agree and continue. Okay, now what do you want to focus on? Conversions or conversion value, other optimizations. So you can use a conversion value 
and you can uh, give uh, values um, for different types of conversions. You, at this point, you already want to have this set up. Now I won't talk about setting up conversions. That's another topic, but le let's aim for simply conversions now and we don't add value to each conversion. Okay, and the next one is set a target, set a target cost per action. So now we are just starting out, so we won't add a target CPA. Uh, we don't have enough data there. So yeah, I won't uh, click this. Let's go to next. And then search network or um, display network. So if you are not in the US, I wouldn't recommend using a display network. Simply, you will just get too much uh, trash. And if you are in Europe or you know any other countries, I would focus on search network only. And uh, yeah, if you are in the US, you can think about using display network as well. Uh, now I will use only the search network for this uh, search campaign. Select locations to target. So yeah, actually now we will go for the United States and uh, yeah, we will keep it simple. So the next one is very important, presence or interest um, or just presence. So basically in most cases you want to pick presence. You want to target those people whose physical location at the moment is in the US. So um, if you sell in the US, 95% of the times you will do this. Uh, presence or interest means those people, not just who are physically there, but also we can target people who are interested in the US. So let's say I have a company in the US or I work with a US company, but I live in Europe. Then uh, I will be one of those guys who have an interest. Um, I think this can be good for certain real estate or things where people are okay to travel, like, uh, I don't know, like a healthcare treatment, special treatment, and you are okay to travel to the US to pay for it. So in those rare cases, you can think about it. Otherwise, we always go for presence. So this really applies for most uh, e-commerce stores. Now we will pick uh, languages. So yeah, we will go only for English and I need to pick English. Okay, it's done. Audience segments. So select audience segments to your um, to add to your campaign. And before I forgot, so if you set up multiple languages or different languages for different campaigns, don't forget that Google doesn't translate your ads. So you have to translate them themselves. So if I run English now, but next I want to add, I don't know, Dutch or German or whatever, then I have to create different campaigns or at least different ads and uh, you have to separate those. Google doesn't translate your ad copy. Okay, so now the next one. So uh, audience segments who we want to target basically. Okay, so here what I would uh, recommend is adding at least 20, 30 different audiences. So uh, you can add interest, demographics, uh, and different things. Now I won't uh, spend too much time here. So we are selling this uh, eco-friendly thing. So yeah, we can look for, I don't know, uh, eco-friendly, I find anything. Yeah, green living enthusiasts, prefers organic food, uh, vegan people, dog lovers, home deco enthusiasts. So yeah, just make sure that you add enough to this. Uh, around 20-30 as a start and uh, then you are good to go. The next one is a uh, targeting setting for this campaign. So the recommended is observation and I also recommend this. Uh, basically, we let the algorithm to really observe what works the best. We don't want to define in a very hard core way uh, the targeting. You should only use targeting when there are some strong industry regulations you cannot uh, show this ad to certain segments, certain type of people, then yes, it makes sense. Otherwise, use observation. Okay, the next one is the broad match keywords. Uh, here, I would recommend turning this off because actually this is a big money spender. So you don't want to keep it on because you will get many, many, you know, low quality leads and, and yeah, just uh, visits. So yeah, just, uh, turn this off because you know, otherwise Google will be very, very generous to spend your money. Okay, so now click more settings 
and uh, add rotation. So yeah, what we can have here is optimize, prefer the best performing ads or just do not optimize, rotate ads indefinitely. So, so yeah, here we want to keep optimize. We really want uh, Google to be efficient and don't spend too much of our money. So I think that that's just very self-explanatory, right? So yeah, I would keep that. Uh, start and end dates. So regarding the timeline of a search campaign, it's not something that you want to run for one or two weeks only. You, once you start it, you really want to run this for ideally at least months. So uh, the start date, let's say today, at the end date, uh, either that is none or uh, we can pick three months from now. Now I will just pick none and we will keep running this uh, campaign. So ad schedule, you can set this as well to uh, specific uh, days. Uh, I know some brands, they have more sales on week weekends, for example, but it's very rare that we use this. So yeah, it's usually just all days and all the time. Okay, and here we can create the keywords and the ads. And here you can see the second layer, which is the um, ad group. And here's the third layer, which is the ad. So yeah, again, nomenclature is important. And uh, let's say we want to use a uh, certain uh, type of keywords for this. So yeah, let's say uh, bathroom. I want to use uh, yeah bathroom, bathroom keyword group for this uh, ad group level and then enter products or services to advertise. Okay, and here we are at the ad group level and the ad level, so the second and the third layers. And again, nomenclature is important, make it easily recognizable. So yeah, what I will do is just uh, name this ad group based on the uh, keyword group that we already researched about. So bathroom uh, keywords and uh, okay, I will create this myself and we will enter the keyword. So typically we add around four, five, six keywords, long take keywords. Yeah, enter these and uh, yeah, apply them. Ah, okay, so now AI actually gives you recommendations. Um, yeah, for this time I, I won't go with that. And once we have this, so we will go down to the third layer, which is the ad level. And uh, yeah, we want to find the product um, on the site. So let's find the product in this dummy store. Um, obviously this is completely made up. Okay, I added the link. And uh, as you can see, there is a strong limitation of the uh, number of letters here, number of characters. So uh, yeah, it can be maximum 15. And as you can see, this link is shown on the top. So yeah, it cannot be a long link like this actually. I uh, need to make this shorter. Okay, now let's go back and uh, yeah, so headline and description and also how many to add. So it really depends. I can see some people, they just add, uh, um, they don't really use all the options, you know, they add uh, three headlines and just a uh, few descriptions. But actually, if you want to be very effective and you want to test properly, um, and how we do this. So regarding the number of headlines and descriptions, um, I can see some uh, people, agencies, they just add a few headlines and descriptions and that's it. But actually you can add very, uh, very lot, you know, headlines. So you can add actually 15 headlines. And if you want to test properly, you want to use all of these options. You can add also four descriptions and that's actually, if you multiply them, it's 60, 60 different variations. So that's a lot. And uh, yeah, that's what you can use. So now I will just simply copy paste these and I will keep this simple, but uh, obviously you want to keep some logic here as well. Uh, you want to uh, include your main uh, keywords that you use for this ad group, um, for the ad and all of that. Now I will just add these three headlines and I think there is only there are only two descriptions, so that's my homework for today. And uh, yeah, let's add this as well. Yeah, this is Bueno. So yeah, now you can see the uh, ad how it would look like, uh, one variation. And uh, there are also site links, callouts, business name and logos. So yeah, you can add your business name and logos, especially if you have Google Business then Google has access to this already. 
uh, site links so you can add four or more to maximize your performance. Basically, the site link is a link that can be added to the bottom of this ad. Um, let's say search our site. Um, yeah, so this is how it, it would look like if you add these uh, um, site links. Now I want to uh, create those, don't save. Okay, and you can also call, use, use call out, which is uh, basically more business information you can, uh, that you can add here. Yeah, it's here at the bottom as you can see. So yeah, these are extra options to really uh, maximize your conversions. And uh, actually this is how we create an ad. Um, so yeah, now let's go to the really last step. So you want to set your uh, budget and uh, here's the recommended budget, average daily budget by Google. And uh, it says weekly conversion would be more than 100. Cost per conversion is $21. Uh, so this is the weekly cost. And uh, yeah, we can see other numbers as well. The average daily budget. Uh, yeah, and you can set a custom budget. So ideally you want to go with a custom budget. You don't want Google to set your budget because again, they want you to spend and they are really generous for your money. So ideally you want to make this keyword research very proper and uh, your goal should be to um, aim at least 10 clicks a day. So you should check what's the uh, auction price now for one click and you want to multiply it by 10 and uh, that should be your daily budget. So let's say our um, cost per click for these keywords, it's around uh, $5. Then I will set the daily budget for $50 and uh, we will have this amount of conversions and uh, weekly cost and that's it. So that's how we define it. Uh, and after you can uh, check the errors and go to publish. So yeah, this is how you can set up a search campaign. I think that's uh, overall uh, not rocket science but I know there are some technical difficulties and really things where you can lose your money and time. So I hope this guide was very helpful. And uh, yeah, in the comment section, feel free to leave your comments, your recommendations and, and tell me or tell us what worked for you. And I hope this whole community can learn from this uh, tutorial and from each other. Hope you enjoyed and even more importantly, you learned a lot from this video. Here at Budai Media, our goal is to help at least 1000 e-commerce businesses grow with high quality marketing because we can see too much shit out there. If you like this video, make sure that you go down, you subscribe to this channel and also hit the notification bell so you get updated of my weekly videos. We collected the top 100 email templates from the past six years and these generated tens of thousands of dollars for our clients. So go down and click the link and get this uh, 100 templates for free. And finally, I will drop you one more video here. Make sure that you check it out as well.